Greetings and welcome to my channel, Take Control of Your Health. I'm Dr. Corey Stern. And if this is your first time tuning in, I want to extend a warm welcome to you and ask you to please take a look at all of the other videos on this channel. There's quite a few of them and most of them are not too long, but all of them contain important information to help you to not be a victim of the bad guys who are trying to make you sicker, weaker, and stupider. And a lot of the videos contain information that help you understand uh, new videos. So if you have a few minutes, I would ask you to just look around, click on the videos um, icon on the channel and see what we have there. And if you're a returning viewer, I wanna thank you so much for uh, all of your support and your comments and your feedback. Please keep it coming, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have not yet had a chance to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button right now. And if you like the content, hit like because it does affect the algorithm and help other people to find these uh, videos. And most importantly, if you know somebody you think would benefit from this information, please make sure to share it with them. So today's topic is all about cholesterol. And this is a, an extremely misunderstood topic and there's so much false data about it and there's so much fear about it. And I wanna do my very best to try to explain it to you because it's probably not what you think. So to start off with, I wanna let you know that cholesterol is actually an essential, essential nutrient. A lot of people just think it's something bad that they have to avoid. And if it's too high, they, they might get heart disease and have to take a drug. That is not true. It, cholesterol is a vital component of, I'm going to tell you exactly what, of some really important functions in your body. Number one, it's a precursor to vitamin D, right? Vitamin D is in part made out of cholesterol. So one of, the, one of the many reasons why there's epidemically low vitamin D, at least in the, the US, I don't know if that's true in other countries, but in the US, a lot of my patients, uh, if they get blood work, it, it comes back that their vitamin D levels are too low is because they're possibly their cholesterol is too low. So you can't, you can't have vitamin D without cholesterol. Another vital function of cholesterol is your ner nervous system, your brain. Your brain is made out of mostly cholesterol and it is a very important part of memory and also of hormones, hormone uh, in uptake into your brain, like brain hormones, such as serotonin. You might've heard of serotonin in terms of depression people with low ser serotonin levels have depression and then they go, sometimes they'll go on antidepressants called SSRIs, which are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So if you have low serotonin, uh, which is known as the feel good hormone or the happy hormone, uh, you may have, you may suffer from depression. Therefore, if you have low cholesterol, you may have low serotonin and the solution to that uh, is not an antidepressant. Uh, the solution is to correct your diet. So we'll talk more about that. Um, another really important function of cholesterol is that it makes up your bile, your bile salts. And bile is, this, it's produced in your liver and then it's stored in your gallbladder and it's secreted when you eat meals with fat in them and it helps you to digest the fat. So when you don't have good bile and you're not digesting fat, it leads to all kinds of symptoms because you also need fat. And we've talked about fat in a couple of other videos. Um, fat, is it good or bad for you? And also commercial seed oils are deadly. So check those out. But fat uh, plays vital roles in your body. And if you're not digesting your fat, um, you're going to have a lot of health issues. So, so your bile salts are made out of cholesterol. Um, 
It's also precursor to hormones that are made in your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are your stress hormones, and but they produce some other hormones as well. They produce adrenaline when you're under a lot of stress. Um, we talk about that in the video called, Are You a Stress Mess? So if you are very stressed, um, your adrenals might be a little bit overworking and you should definitely take a look at that video. But your adrenal glands also produce something called glucocorticoids and they regulate your blood sugar. And your adrenal glands also produce something called mineral corticoids and they, and they regulate your, your mineral balance. So those two hormones are made out of, guess what, cholesterol. And um, these types of uh, hormones that are produced by your adrenal gland, um, the body will produce in response to, in response to stress, and um, they help with healing and inflammation. And the other um, hormones that are produced in your adrenal glands that are made out of cholesterol are your sex hormones. So testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, right? And I think most people understand that those hormones are really important for you to have a normal life and feel good and be healthy and have energy and have fertility and have a sex drive. Um, so you can see that the truth is you cannot be healthy without cholesterol. So the goal is not to get rid of cholesterol. That's, that is not what you should be doing, despite what you might be being told about that. So let me just go into the truth about cholesterol when you're told it's too high, you get some blood work and your medical doctor says, oh, your, your cholesterol is too high or your ratio of good and bad cholesterol is not good and we have to put you on a medication to lower your cholesterol, right? So we'll talk about the truth about that and then about the medications that are used to reduce your, your total cholesterol. So I'm going to, going to try to explain this in, in as simple terms as possible without getting too scientific here, but the amount of cholesterol in your blood is not really what the issue is. The issue is the molecules or particles that transport the cholesterol. So I want you to think of these particles as transportation units, as, as um, let's say uh, uh, buses or or cars, right? So you actually you actually have both of them. You have you have a bus that holds a lot of particles, and then you have a, a little car that doesn't hold as many particles. So the particles that these transport molecules have are cholesterol. That's what they carry. That's what they transport. Not just cholesterol. They also transport something else called triglycerides, which is the fat uh, that that is in your blood. So the, the ones that are the buses are called high density lipoproteins. And the ones that are cars are called low density lipoproteins. So the high density lipoproteins can carry a lot of cholesterol. You don't need as many buses on the road when they have more passengers in them. And what these buses are doing is they're transporting cholesterol or triglycerides from point A to point B, you know, just wherever the body needs it. So let's say your brain needs cholesterol, it's floating around in your blood, the cholesterol is in your blood. So the high density um, lipoproteins will pick up the, their passengers, the cholesterol, and then they'll drive them into the brain where they can be taken up by the brain cells. The low density lipoproteins, the little guys, the little cars, they can't carry as much cholesterol in them. They are uh, denser. They are denser vehicles. They are sticky. And you need more of them because they can't carry as many passengers. 
So the problem happens when you have more of these little cars, which are dense and sticky, transporting your cholesterol than you do of the big buses, which are light and fluffy. The little sticky cars actually cause the problem. They have a tendency to, let's say, crash into the walls of your blood vessels and get stuck there or create damage. They create damage in the walls of your blood vessels. And if that happens enough time and there's an inflammatory response, you can end up with what's called atherosclerosis, which is a buildup of plaque, sticky stuff in your arteries, which can then stop the blood from flowing properly. And that can lead to things like a heart attack or a stroke. So the real problem is not how much cholesterol you have. The real problem is how much low density lipoproteins you have versus how much high density lipoproteins you have. And there's a different test for that. There's a way to test the number of particles so we can know if the quality of your particles are not nice and, and big and fluffy, which is good, or if they're dense and sticky, which is bad. The test that most people get, the, the lipid profile test, which tells you how much total cholesterol you have and then how, how much LDL and how much HDL is not telling you the, the particle number. It's really telling you how much cholesterol is in your high density vehicles and how much cholesterol is in your low density vehicles. But we really need to know how many particles you have. So the regular test that most people are getting, that's called um, low density lipoprotein dash C for cholesterol or high density lipoprotein dash C, the C stands for cholesterol. But what we want to see is hot, low density lipoprotein dash P, which stands for particle or high density lipoprotein dash, dash P. So the test that you can get um, at least this is in the US, I don't know about other countries. There's one called the cardiac IQ test. Uh, the other one is called the NMR, N is in Nancy, M is in Mary R. Um, those are two, two names, two different names for the same test essentially, which look at your particle numbers. So this is the test that everybody should be getting if you want to know the truth about what's going on in your uh, arteries. And some medical doctors know about it and give the test and other ones, I've had patients tell me that they asked for the test and the medical doctor said, oh, you don't need that, what do you need that for? Um, I suspect that maybe they didn't know what it was. So that's a possibility. So being an advocate for yourself, if you would like to see what your particle numbers are and what your quality of these lipoproteins are, you should uh, insist on getting that test. Now, the next question is, what would determine having too much of the low density lipoproteins versus more of the high density ones? So. In other words, keeping in mind that cholesterol is good, and if you have a lot of high-density lipoproteins carrying cholesterol, you're okay. It doesn't matter what the total number is. It doesn't matter what your total cholesterol is. What would cause you to have um, too much of the low density? Or um, and the other the other thing that that can happen with these low-density uh, lipoproteins is if you have too much triglycerides in your blood, so blood fat. If that's too high, um, the low density lipoproteins, they can't fit, right? Remember, they don't fit too many passengers. So if you have triglycerides hopping a ride with them, they can't fit much cholesterol. And then your body has to make more of them. So you, the more low density lipoprotein particles you have, the worse it is. So what would cause you to have too much triglycerides in your blood and cause you to have too much low density lipoproteins. 
So the answer to that is very simple. It's primarily bad habits and uh, lifestyle induced uh, uh, issues. So there's something called metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is when you have at least three of these five uh, uh, risk factors. Um, one would be high blood sugar. Okay, the high blood sugar, um, which can lead to diabetes, can cause you to have too many triglycerides in your blood, which can cause you to have too many high de uh, low density lipoproteins. Um, high blood pressure. Um, too many, uh, sorry, obesity, right? So these are all risk factors, um, blood sugar, blood pressure, causing too many triglycerides, too many LDL particles and obesity, right? That is what leads to heart and other problems like strokes. And by the way, a stroke, is when you have a blood clot usually in your carotid artery, which is in your neck, right? And then uh, a heart attack is caused by a blood clot in your uh, coronary arteries. So a uh, stroke causes damage to the brain and a heart attack will um, stop your body from being able to transport oxygen and then cause tissue death and eventually total death if if uh, you don't have intervention right away. So what causes metabolic syndrome? What causes you to have high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high triglycerides in your blood, obesity, all of this. Um, so number one is a bad diet. And that's really what this whole channel is about is telling you all the things that you should not be eating. Um, so a lot of processed foods, too much sugar, uh, bad quality salt, which uh, we talked about on this channel before the difference between bad salt, sodium chloride and good salt, which is um, pink salt or sea salt, um, not exercising. Um, the, your, your body is biologically designed to move, right? So when you don't move enough, things go wrong. And these are the typical things that will go wrong, right? If you don't move enough, it's much easier to gain weight for one thing. Too much alcohol puts you at higher risk uh, for developing more of these low density lipoproteins. Cigarette smoking does too. All of these things that cause inflammation in your body, um, they all lead to this cascade effect. And, um, also hypothyroidism. So a low functioning thyroid changes the way you metabolize fats, which leads to higher numbers of low density lipoproteins. So, and thyroid issues are an epidemic in this country. And we talk about that in the video about autoimmune disease and how to prevent it. And probably need to do a video specifically just all about thyroid because I'm seeing more and more and more problems with uh, people having low thyroid function or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, autoimmune disease of the thyroid, thyroid nodules, thyroid cancer, and we know what causes all of this, so it can it can be avoided and helped. The other factor that can cause too many low density lipoproteins is genetics. So you can have a gene where you're producing a type of this lipoprotein that's a problem and increases your risk factor of heart disease. But I am a big fan of overcoming genetic obstacles. And you certainly, if you do have whatever bad genes you might have, and you know, we all have some, some of us have more than others, you can overcome them to some degree by not eating bad food, by exercising, by getting enough sleep, by drinking clean water. Um, you certainly will increase your risks if you don't do those things. 
So now I want to talk a little bit about statin drugs. Statin drugs are what are most commonly used to reduce cholesterol, um, such as Lipitor. Uh, and what they do basically is they block your liver's ability to produce cholesterol. And by the way, um, eating foods or avoiding eating foods with cholesterol, which is what you'll be told by a medical doctor if your blood test shows that you have a high cholesterol, will just simply cause your liver to produce more. So the two ways that you have cholesterol in your body is one, your liver makes it, and two, you eat it. All right, so if you're, <clears throat> if you're eating cholesterol, your liver will make less because you'll have enough of it. And if you're not eating it at all, your liver will just keep making it. And we'll talk about food and cholesterol toward the end. So the, what statins do is they basically force your liver into an unnatural reaction and suppress its ability to produce cholesterol. Now, anytime you force the body into an unnatural reaction uh, and suppress a function, it's going to cause side effects. And statins actually cause a lot of really bad side effects. For example, they can cause muscle weakness and cramping and pain, muscle weakness, cramping and pain, and actually they can cause your muscle tissue to start breaking down. It can also interfere with your nervous system function. So remember, if you make your cholesterol too low, your brain needs it. So if you don't have enough cholesterol, you can develop dementia. And if you're, if you're taking statins for a long period of time and your cholesterol is too low over a long period of time, there is an association between too low cholesterol and a higher risk of dementia. It can also affect your nervous system by causing something called um, neuropathy, which is when you have numbness and tingling in your extremities, in your hands and feet. And basically what's happening is your nerves are getting damaged because cholesterol is, a, it's part of the, it's called the myelin sheath that surrounds your, your nerves. And that's how the electrical impulses are conducted through this sheath. So cholesterol plays a very big role in how your nervous system functions. So if you don't have enough of it, there's a good possibility you're gonna start seeing damage in the smaller nerves in your hands and feet. Cholest uh, statin drugs also lower your coenzyme Q10, CoQ10. And this is um, a critical cellular nutrient in all of your cells. And it it's, exists in all of your cell membranes, and your heart requires very high levels of it. It also plays a role in nerve conduction, in muscle integrity, in collagen formation, in elastin formation, which collagen and elastin are like two of the main components of your blood vessels. So it's a little ironic that statins reduce your CoQ10 levels which then leads to congestive heart failure and loss of integrity in your blood vessels, right? So in other countries, not in the US, but in other countries, um, it's a law that if a medical doctor prescribes a statin, they have to also uh, prescribe CoQ10, but that, that's, that's not the case here. Um, so because of the CoQ10 connection, Statins can increase your risk of congestive heart failure. And they also can increase your risk of depression because of what we talked about earlier, it's interfering with hormone production, um, particularly your brain's ability to uptake serotonin. Um, There's some evidence that statins may increase your risk of cancer. It's hard to find studies on this because the studies that are done with humans are too short term to actually track cancer formation, right? The studies are usually two to three years long. It's not long enough to allow uh, malignancies to grow, but in studies done on, on rats with statins, it always shows a correlation with cancer. 
And uh, statins can also increase your risk of pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the pancreas, which can be very dangerous and deadly. So there are natural treatments to improve your um, to improve your lipoprotein quality and thus uh, reduce your risk of uh, forming atherosclerosis in your arteries. And let's talk about some of those natural uh, treatments. So one of them is red rice yeast. A lot of people have heard about that. And that actually slows down cholesterol production in the liver. It does, it has a few other mechanisms, but that's basically uh, what it does. Um, Google lipids, Google lipids are actually a tree resin from India and that helps the liver to metabolize cholesterol more effectively. Um, polycosinol, which is the waxy coating from, sh from sugar cane. And that is, it's not fully understood, but it works similar to Google lipids in helping to metabolize cholesterol. And then um, omega-3, omega-3 fatty acids, and we talk about them in the fats video, they reduce the production of, um, of the denser particles. So, um, and they, it all, they also remove, help to remove triglycerides um, from the particles. So when you remove the triglycerides from the particles, um, they can carry more uh, cholesterol and you don't need as many of them. Um, and omega-3s also have a, a mild blood thinning effect. So they reduce your risk of clots and they're, they're anti-inflammatory. So just keep in mind that inflammation also in general causes damage to the inside of your arteries to the lining of your arteries. The way I think about it is kind of like a road. And if the black top on the road is very smooth, um, you know, you're, you're, you have smooth sailing when you're driving across it, but if it has a lot of potholes and cracks and damage, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So when you have high inflammatory levels, uh, you have in um, potholes and, cracks in your in the lining of your arteries and that can also lead to the formation of plaques and clots. And the last thing I want to talk about in terms of natural treatment is artichoke globe artichoke leaf extract, um, which has a it actually has a similar mechanism to statins. So I use all of these things with patients and I have great results with them, I actually have a supplement that I use called Colade, which has all of these things in it and we get great results with it. And, you know, you can easily see the results um, because this is one of the things that you can measure uh, it with using the cardiac IQ test. You can see the, the improvement in the quality of the lipoproteins. So, if you are in the U.S. and you're interested in, in Colade, um, let me know and I can get some out to you. So the last thing that I want to talk about is foods. So a lot of foods are vilified uh, because they are high in cholesterol. And I have patients day after day telling me, oh, I don't eat too many eggs because of the cholesterol. I have People, what people say to me is, I have cholesterol and I, I can't eat eggs. So, okay, everybody has cholesterol. You're supposed to have it um, and you can eat eggs. You just have to eat really good quality eggs, right? Happy chickens lay happy eggs. And you need um, uh, pasture raised eggs. So eggs from pasture raised chickens. So the cholesterol quality in the egg, and it's in the egg yolk, by the way, the cholesterol quality will be good. And if you eat good quality cholesterol, it's good for you. Cholesterol is only present in animals. Okay, the vegetables don't have cholesterol. So, and also fat and cholesterol are two different things, right? So we know that avocados are 
fat and olives are fat, olive oil's fat, but they don't have cholesterol in them because they're made from plants, right? So the only foods containing cholesterol are from animals. You know, again, you don't necessarily have to reduce your intake of cholesterol if you're eating good quality animal cholesterol, meaning grass-fed or pasture-raised, organic, um, that is nutrient dense, that is nutritious cholesterol. If you go on a search engine and you look at foods high in cholesterol, some of the things, I did that just for fun, some of the things that I saw were absolutely ridiculous. So I saw a website that said, uh, you know, one of the top uh, cholesterol containing foods is soda, soft drinks, right? That's just stupid. That doesn't they, that doesn't have any cholesterol in it. What they're trying to say, and they explain, if you read it, is that when you drink uh, things that are high in sugar, yes, that causes you to actually produce more low density lipoproteins. That that could be true, right? But it's very misleading because there is no cholesterol in um, anything but animal products. You know. That said, you still really shouldn't eat or drink soda and you should not eat processed garbage foods. So I hope that helps. So many people ask me questions about this topic. Um, it's probably, there's enough information to do another whole video on it. But for now, I think that should clarify some of it. And I will put some links in this video. So if you want to, go ahead and ask for a car cardiac IQ test or an NMR test um, and take a look at it uh, and see if you really have reason to be concerned. I'll also link some articles about statins and about the function of cholesterol in your body. And again, if you're interested in Colaid, uh, just put it in the comments and I'll also have my email address in there so you can email me directly. And I also want to let everyone know that I now have channels on Rumble and on Brighteon. So on Brighteon, my channel is called Take Control of Your Health and I'll put a link to that in the description. And on Rumble, I don't have a URL yet but I will put a link to a video in there so you can find me on it and follow me there if you want to. Um, and that's all I got for today. Thank you again for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And I will see you all again very soon.